Uh, well, I watched the movie today. It's really good fun. It was one of those great kind of hypothetical uh, sci-fis where I just spent the whole time thinking, what would I do? And I think I'd make all the same mistakes as the characters, basically, is pretty much what I'd do. Yeah. Um, but I was going to ask you what it was that initially attracted you to getting involved in Parallel. Well, I, uh, I read the script and then uh, the director, Isaac, uh, I saw his two previous films. And I think that he had a very interesting take on and, and honestly, I'm, I'm not a big sci-fi fan. And it's not something that I watch that often, but when I saw his films, he has a more of in them philosophical theme to it, which I think is when you do sci-fi, uh, it's such a great thing. I mean, this script is less, I'd say in its base characteristics, it's, it's less philosophical, but again, it's, as you said, you raised the question of what would I have done? Um, so yeah, I, I think basically I, I was I was very curious and, and um, I'm working with Isaac and to see what he could do with, with it. And also the character, that kind of broad arc. Um, I'm, I'm attracted to that. Yes. What well, was he like to, to, to collaborate with us as a filmmaker? I mean, like you said, you can see his vision so clearly in, in his movies, but was he, is he quite a meticulous filmmaker or is he want, is he, does he allow much freedom on set? Yeah, he's, he's very, when it comes to freedom, he was so generous. And, and I came up to him the first day because I'm, I'm that kind of actor. I, I, I come, I bring a lot of ideas to set. Uh, and I just told him that, look, I'll have 100 ideas every day, but I'll never take it personal if you don't like fancy them or think this is not the best way to go. So we had a great collaboration and then sometimes we would have this friction of trying to understand the scene and he had one take on it, I had another. And I, I kind of like that when you have to grind that toward, against each other. But uh, yeah, he was so welcoming and, and to me and the rest of the cast, when it came to working on the characters, suggesting scenes. So it was a joy. Yeah, and you obviously mentioned, well, I, well, sorry, I mentioned at the beginning about kind of the characters, like motives and kind of, but do you have, did you understand what the, the, the decisions your character made and how important is, is it for you when sort of getting into, into the character that you can find kind of those sort of, well, those parallels, but, but were you able to kind of see every time he kind of did things, were you able to think like, yeah, I can totally understand why he would do that and understand his motives? Yeah, I, I think that's, I have to, I have to be able to relate to them. Um, I guess, I mean, if, if I can't relate to them, it's hard for me to ask uh, that the audience should relate to him. Now, even though it's, you know, a character that makes different choices that you wouldn't personally agree on that you would do, you'd at least have to see where he's coming from or why he did that. Um, so sure, I, I have to be able to relate to and defend and say this is why. And so, so if you found a portal to a parallel universe, would you would you give it a go, or would you be too afraid to uh, to open up that Pandora's box? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I honestly, I think I'd be too afraid. Yeah, I'd smash that mirror, and the, the film would have been a minute long. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good thing you weren't on a screenwriting duty for this one, though. But, um, yeah. but obviously, it's, it's a great kind of collaborative affair between the actors. But obviously, with Amal, you work closely, and Georgia and Mark. But obviously, Amal being from, from the UK, how was he to... Because we're, we're very proud of him, because obviously, he's been making great stuff for years now. But what, what was he like to work with on this? Uh, he's very... He has a great work ethic. Uh, it was so inspiring to meet all of them. But when it comes to Amal... I think he has this, he's, he's working really hard and he was so interested in, and we had, for instance, in the beginning of the film, we have this pitch meeting where we were trying to sell this uh, parking app. And I came up with the idea that my cousin who's been working as a salesman for, for a number of years that we could, we were then in Vancouver, but, and, and my cousin was back in Europe 
we, I said to him, Mel, what do you think if we sort of practice with him and see how we can get the pitch to work? And he was just, he was so, he thought, yeah, that's a great idea. And, and he had, I mean, acting wise, he had like written backstories and stuff that he would share. Uh, so he, I, I really think he's, he was so brave and like courageous and, and showing his work and, and just committing to it fully. And then he's, <laughs> he's just, you know, you talk about triple threat, uh, dance, sing, act. He would, even though he would play, I'd say the least joyful character in between takes, he would be the one singing, dancing. And I know there's some clip around Twitter when it's like four in the morning, we've been working too long and he's trying to make me dance uh, on the public library in, in Vancouver. And I'm just go to bed. Um, no, so it was, uh, it was very inspiring working with him um for sure and of course in terms of like working with um sort of brilliant of actors that you that you collaborate with and inspire you i mean i just wondering because you obviously started working with rami malek pr that predating his big oscar win and now he's now you know james bond's biggest adversary so i'm just wondering if you could get a sense when you started on mr robot that you were working with someone that would go on to to achieve the success that he has done i mean, it's it's always hard to see <clears throat> You, you can notice that people are, as I, as I said about Amal, that he's very passionate and he goes fully into it. And, and Rami was the same when we met the first time we, we were doing the pilot for Robot in late fall of 2014. And first time I met him, he, he was walking around with a keyboard under his arm because he was, he was um, no, the, the keypad for, for like a computer um because he was practicing you know fingers and I, I would notice that he was also very into like the character and the part um but again it's it's just when it comes to robot it was just i think overall that what happened to that series that it would become what it became uh, when you just have a pilot and and it, it's just hard to back then grasp all of it um, so to answer your question it's very hard to see I mean I worked 10 years ago I, I worked with Alicia Vikander and I played her boyfriend and you know you're just lucky enough to, to sometimes you meet people that are like really hardworking. And, and what, I, what I think when it comes to, if you take Alicia or, or Rami as examples, you have people that are very down to earth and hardworking. And from, from what I've seen and, and when I've met and worked with them, that success doesn't change you necessarily in, in terms of who you are towards other people. Uh, but I think that's maybe that's the most uh, impressive thing to see that you can achieve such massive success. But it would be, take Rami, for example, he would know everyone's name on set. Uh, and it's a big set. And I think that says something about a person. And, I'm, and to me, that's, that's just so inspiring. Yeah. I'm just I mean how much did you enjoy your time on that series because I guess with an actor you're so at mercy of the writers and the studios and networks and producers that it kind of continues on so obviously it has it has now finished but you must in that kind of the, those few years you were on it you must have just loved it and was it quite disappointing when it, even though it did work and it suited the the world for it to have that ending uh, was it still a little bit of a disappointment when you realized that the the adventure was going to come to an end I mean, we, we knew from before we started season four that that was going to be the last one. And, and also when I knew that it came from Sam Esmail, that he said, look, four seasons, this is how I see the story. Instead of, I mean, you could, if you're in a series, you could be canceled after the pilot. You could be on a very successful series, but they'll make 
another season just of, you know, for making money, whatever. But I'm so proud when I talk to people and I can say that season four is almost the best one. So ending on that high note, um, of course, I mean, as much as I like to do that, I, I, I could have done 19 seasons because uh, I like working on it. But when you see it in, in, in retrospect, just knowing that we could end on our own terms and, and the way that Sam wanted us to, and the fans seems to be very happy with the way it ended, that's, that's the best thing. Yeah. I mean, you must be so thrilled to have got that part. Because I mean, obviously, you've been in this industry a, a number of years now. But does it sometimes take a punt on a kind of a, on a on a, a, a casting agent in in America, for example, just to, to give you that kind of international um, kind of work? Because I guess obviously you're making fantastic projects in Scandinavia, but this must have been such a, a thrill for you to take that first big kind of international kind of role. Yeah, and, and again, it was when we started it was just a pilot no one knew what it was going to be um i thought the part seemed to be very thrilling and um, i had a great conversation with sam and and nils arden Uplev, who who directed the pilot uh, who's danish director and and i just to me was being a part of this who knew i mean it could have been just a pilot um so so it's 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 a bit of a difference that sometimes you're you're able to step into a project after a number of seasons or films and you know well this is successful I'm just going to jump on this train but being on it from the beginning it's it's weird but you sort of when you also you get to see the process when you're in it uh, okay uh, the pilot seemed to be like very successful Tribeca wanted it oh the series it's it's gotten reviews like you 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 you, you can see all that happening all the time and so you have to pinch your arm a little all the time and and again when we won the golden globe in, in 2016 i'd say that's the that's just such an amazing moment to be in that room with the cast on stage and just knowing that wow we came from this little, no one knew anything. So, so sure, I have to pinch my arm, and then I'm just, I'm just so happy it, it, it happened. In regards to um, like kind of other Swedish actors that you might kind of admire and want to emulate, I, I, I always think of Stellan Skarsgård as being this like perfect kind of uh, actor because he just takes roles all over the world. He'll work in every country. He's, I mean, he's been in big Hollywood films. He's been in big TV series, but he'll often make movies back in in, in Scandinavia, in Sweden, in Norway. And I just wondered if he's an actor that you look at and think that's the sort of career I'd quite like to have too. 100%. If there, if I have uh, have to say one actor, especially from, from Sweden, it's, it's Stellan Skarsgård. I had, I had the opportunity to work with him a number of years ago. And, and to me, that was, uh, that was amazing. And, and so funny because we live pretty, you know, not far away from each other. So I, I see him every now and then walking down the street and it just strikes me that, you know, it's, it's been so long ago and, and, <clears throat> But I, every time I see him, I just get so happy. I, I, I can't explain it, but I'm like, there's Stellan Skarsgård. And I'm, you know, I, I just get proud when I see him walking down the street. I can't explain it. But as you say, he's, uh, he's been doing this for, so, I mean, so many years. He's been out there for 25, 30 years. Um, he's got, he's a... Uh, such a nice man uh he's got a great reputation he's doing as you said big projects small projects uh sci-fi thrillers uh, tv drama um and he's always great so yeah i mean I i'm just so proud that i I almost live on the same street as uh, as Dylan. That's 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 almost life goals. Yeah. Well, I've I've been lucky because he's so busy. I've I've actually been lucky enough to interview him about six times. I think now, and like you said, every time oh, wow. I see him, he's just the nicest guy. And my and he does he lights up a room. It's a 
it's say he's a great person to meet and I, I, I bet he must have been a joy to work with <laughs> absolutely and and i i'm also fortunate enough to to you know i've worked with with um some of his uh, uh children yeah. and there's a few you of can them. See that. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah but and 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 also i i can see that like the the kind of work ethic and and it's like and as you said when you interviewed him and and when i worked with him and met him in other situations he's just a really nice guy yeah. and and that's yeah that's mm -hmm. something that everybody likes i guess yeah yeah, I, I could go. I could carry on talking about Stellan Scars for hours, but I will move on. Uh, so, my final question then, really, to you, Martin, today is just what's what's sort of next? What's because obviously this year it's been a bit of a mad year, but lots of projects have paused and stalled and been cancelled. I just wondered how twenty twenty one is is looking for you. Well, I in in one weird way, I was I was lucky enough to when we wrapped Robot in in yeah year year and a half ago. I already had my next assignment, and that was um, four films, uh, crime films here in, in Sweden, together with, uh, among the cast is uh, Christopher Hibiu from, from Game of Thrones. Uh, so we were actually able to film the entire spring and early summer without closing down, um, which was, I think, pretty unique uh, when, you, when you see what happened in the world. So I'm, I'm going to start filming again in early January, uh, a project. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, well, yep. it's, yeah, I was going to say, you, it's, I think the, Swede, the Swedes have been like a shining light <laughs> in many ways this year and, and the way you guys have handled everything this year. So it's good to know that you guys have been working well up until the summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hopefully it's, it's when talking about the pandemic, it's I guess it's too soon to to say what kind of strategy worked and, and not worked. So, uh, but yeah, we didn't close down for, for filming at least. Yeah, brilliant. Well, I look forward to whatever you've got coming up next. And best of luck with the release of, of Parallel and stuff. But like I, we said before, it's just such a an interesting film. And one of the main biggest compliments you can give to a movie is that I haven't seen anything quite like it for a while, which is always good when you watch as many films as I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm glad you're saying that. And I guess also the sort of play with different genre that it, it presents mm. is also a bit um, different. Yeah, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Well, best of yeah. luck with, with your, your shoot in January. And um, hopefully, yeah, maybe one day we'll be able to do this in person. Who knows? Thank you very much, Stefan. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!